Hey everybody, welcome to the video, welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, we have been finishing a lot of our videos with Ohio River barge traffic drone footage. And because it's popular, we've also started putting it at the beginning of the videos as well. So if you like what you see, hit that like button. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also in this video, we're out in the woods today working on the four-wheeler trail of all things from the barn to the YouTube Yacht Project. Have some great new shots with that battery-powered electric chainsaw. Also, at the very end, a nice sunset drone flyover of the Hoosier National Forest. So be sure to stay tuned and check that out. I want to point something out I haven't shown on some of these barge videos is those numbers on the side. That is the current draft of that vessel right there. And that was only drafting two feet at the stern of that barge. That is a Kirby Marine vessel. According to the stats online, it is currently headed downriver all the way to Baton Rouge. Kirby Marine specializes in chemicals and oils and refined oils. And that kind of thing typically a tanker fleet i'm not exactly sure what they're hauling specifically in this type of tanker vessel if you do know 100 for sure throw it in the comments and i'll pin it to the top and we can all learn something together i will say based on the way he's drafting though sitting that high in the water he's most likely empty headed down river you saw the draft numbers towards the stern of the barge sitting at two feet when you get closer there's a second set of numbers towards the bow you'll notice he's actually sitting a little lower towards the front and i'm assuming that is because of all the equipment towards the front other than that i'll throw some text up towards the end that list the name of the vessel and the horsepower of that vessel and then you'll just have to stay tuned for the rest of the video All right, guys, we're back in the woods today. We're doing two main things that I want to talk about and show you. One, we're kind of cleaning up the mess we made when we tracked the equipment out. This is the four-wheeler trail that goes from the barn to the backside of the YouTube Yacht Project. You can see I'm still using that little electric saw. Absolutely loving it, but this is exactly what I got it for, just a little trimming and cleaning and that kind of thing. You also notice I'm using the uh, Wapa Chapa modifications as a dual function, using it as a little bit of a carry-all there, which has proven to be a handy little bonus feature so pretty excited about that and i'm also going to talk to you a little bit about land management and you saw the towboat footage at the beginning i don't have any towboat footage to finish the whole project off but i do have a really nice sunset cruise at the end as well
So here's a new kind of angle, camera angle I'm trying out with the uh, new electric saw. If you like this, I've got a bunch of these random little clips at the very end right before the sunset cruise, so stay tuned for that. And let me know in the comments if you like this shot. That was a little bit different. thought it might kind of freshen things up. Can you see all the honeysuckle vines all up and down the trees? Can you see how it's a mess through here? All the dead that the honeysuckles killed, the poison ivy's killed, the green briars killed. Now here's what we got. We have big, beautiful poplars like this. Give you a size comparison. Pretty decent sized poplar. And we've got a bunch of those. And we've got all kinds of hardwoods on here. We've got oaks, cherries, poplars. I really like poplar trees. I mean, you name it, we got it. We also have some native red buds, some native dogwoods all kinds of good trees that we want to come up through all this underbrush and be a decent timber stand. I know you can't harvest red buds and dogwoods. I'm just saying they're pretty trees and they're native and we're trying to protect them. Anywho, the problem that we run into with all this honeysuckle and greenbrier is if you can see in there, there's a tree trying to be a tree, just doing tree things, but it can't because the honeysuckles smothering it out and it will kill that tree. And we will not get these big ginormous oxygen pooping machines like that guy right there, stealing terminology from logger weight. Check him out if you're not already. So what we're doing, we're trying to keep the honeysuckle, the green briar, and everything under control. And to do that, basically, if there's a dead tree with honeysuckle in it, we're taking that dead tree down so it kills the honeysuckle as well and keeps it down on the ground. And if there's a tree with live honeysuckle, we're just going around cutting the vines at the bottom. So anywho, you kind of saw us cleaning that up. We're going to cut this dead trunk down there. PSA, don't cut down dead trees. It's kind of dangerous. Anywho, we're going to do it. Then we're going to do something fun with that. And I got another implement I want to throw on today. I don't think I've shown you guys yet. I've had it for a while. A buddy was borrowing it. And I'm ready to get back to it. So let's just do it. Let's just... Coolio, man. All right, so I just want to show you, this is an area we did last year. You can kind of see where we stopped at. We're currently, we're back, back in that spot back there, but this is where we stopped at. I just want to show you what I'm talking about. Once you get all those vines and briars beat down, look at all this new growth that pops up. Once you give it a chance and you give it that shot in the sky, it's gonna go. And you get all these new growth hardwoods that come up. But look at this. See how that honeysuckle's already trying to get on that guy come on look at all this new new uh, hardwood growth in here we'll go down here and i'll show you some more but that's the goal the goal is to get all this nasty stuff look at that mess in there the goal is to get all that honeysuckle and everything beat down so we can get these oxygen producing monsters up in the air that's the goal that's what we're trying to do hope that makes sense all right so we're going to get the wapa choppa off the back of the tractor here that uh, adjustable turnbuckle had a pretty dry barrel on it, soaked it down some oil pretty good before we put it onto the next implement. But I'm pretty excited. I got this thing setting on blocks outside. I'm gonna throw a couple quick coats of paint on. I just rolled it on. This isn't anything fancy. I just want the uh, implement enamel on there enough to make it look like it's John Deere green. That's the whole goal. Look good as you drive by, right? And a good enough base that we can get the Wapa Choppa decals on. So hopefully in the next video, you will see Wapa Choppa down the side of this thing. If you missed the video where we built this, be sure to go back and check it out. I'll do my best to do an info card somewhere at the top. So here's a little zoomed out image of what we're doing. We got another little small dead leaning tree. I want to emphasize something. Any green you see right now is honeysuckle. There are very few green buds on the trees right now. And any green that's showing up on camera is all honeysuckle. So that's what we're battling against. And we just keep trying to get this stuff down on the ground where we can actually manage it. We get it into all these piles throughout the field and eventually the cleared out spots become bigger than the piles. 
and uh, eventually the hardwoods come and take over and keeps everything looking nice and you get a really nice timber stand. It is a long process. It takes a lot of time. But in the end, if you've got the downrange vision, it's going to be well worth the work. I will say this though. I just discovered a channel called Upstate Brush Control. And if you're not watching Upstate Brush Control, you need to be. They seem like awesome people and he has some pretty impressive equipment. And anytime I'm doing this work, I really wish I had his equipment where I'm at. Here is what we put on the back after we took the Wapa Chapa off. A buddy's been borrowing this and he, and he brought it back the other day and I'm so excited to get it back on the tractor because I have found it to be the absolute perfect trail maintenance tool. It's not necessarily designed for trail maintenance, but it works really well for that. And as soon as we get these turf tires throttled through this little wet spot, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Here's the way I utilize this on the trail. On the front, the tines it has, I pretty much use that as a type of rake and I just kind of drag everything down and I drag it all into piles and once I get a little bit of a pile built up, I back over it, I take the loader, I push that pile off the way and out of the trail and you just keep working your way down. Now the handy thing about this versus a landscape rake, I know they have landscape rakes, but the handy thing about this is this weighs more than a landscape rake and the tines will actually pull up you know, if there's little one inch and one and a half and two inch trees that I've bush hogged over to make the trail, oh, I knocked you guys off. But check it out. You're going to get a sweet view of the blue sky. It's worth it. There you go. Look at that. It's absolutely gorgeous. Look at that for a random accidental shot. Sun in the clouds. Gorgeous. Anywho, because it weighs more, if you bush hog over those little one inch and one and a half inch trees, it weighs enough that those tines will actually pop those suckers out as you drive over them enough times. So I really like it for that reason. It helps keep those little trees off the trail. And you can see, you just make one pass, you kind of rake this stuff out of the way, you back over it, you push it off the trail, you make another pass the other way, and boom, it's done. It's really great for trail maintenance. It's what I like to use. I don't know, it works for me, so what else can I say? also great for filling in little stump holes that was a little stump holes about two feet deep i know i'm just throwing some crap in just doing the tire pack and running across it with the pulverizer a few times but look at that it's pretty much gone we're not trying to make a road out of it we're just trying to get it smoothed out enough that whenever i come around the corner it's a little too hot i'm not blowing my front end out So we finally made it around the backside of where the YouTube Yacht Project is going to go with the four-wheeler trail. Just trying to get this last little corner cleaned up. You can actually see the ladder where I had you sitting on the time lapse from the last video. You can see what's left of the burn pile sitting over there from the last video. If you haven't seen that last video, be sure to go back in the playlist and check it out. I'll try to throw a link in the description, but I always say that and then I always forget. So you may not look for it there, but it might be there. Who knows? Anywho, I absolutely love this little tractor, but I did struggle a little bit on this last little bit because it was a little muddy. And knowing that I am bringing the skid steer up in a couple days to get some of this cleaned up, I decided, ah, we'll get what we can and then we'll just head out so i don't quite get it but you can watch me struggle for a little bit anyway i also have some random clips like i promised of more of that bar shots from earlier and then the sunset drone flyover of all the scenery as everything's starting to green up
here is that sunset drone cruise I promised everybody. We are actually starting over Kentucky, heading towards Indiana. The sun is setting behind Indiana on the ridge there. As we get a little bit closer, I'll point a few things out, but most of this is going to be you enjoying the scenery and this twangy little country music in the background. So that body of water you're looking at there, that is Rainbow Lake. That is what's left in the old Molzer's Crushed Stone Quarry. That's what you're flying over now. It is now owned and operated by the Hoosier National Forest. In fact, everything you're looking at in this shot here is Hoosier National Forest. We have 60,000 acres of national forest in our county. We're going to slowly pan back around, point back towards Kentucky, and you're going to see the Ohio River again. That's all I was going to point out. Everything else is just beautiful scenery. As always, guys, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you leaving the comments. Be sure to hit that like button if you liked the video. And if you really liked the video, be sure to tell your friends how much fun you're having as a part of this YouTube family and see if they'll come join the family with us. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.